It's a hop back over the Atlantic Ocean this week to another Handmade Builder review. Keep watching. Hi, yeah, welcome back. It's got a ukulele review day as always with your summary video review for the full detail written review linked below where you'll find better pictures and scores. Uh, again, thank you to those who've donated to the channel and the website through PayPal and the Patreon. The links are on the website. Uh, that is really how this keeps going. Uh, and why not think about subscribing? Hit the subscribe button down there for the YouTube channel and the little bell symbol will allow you to get notifications of when I put new stuff up. Okay, this is a return for this brand. And I've featured them once before, and it is over the uh, Atlantic Ocean because this is a handmade instrument made by a luthier in Nicaragua. Uh, that luthier is called uh, Nestor Fuentes Castillo, uh, and he builds under his own brand name of NFC ukuleles. He's not been going very long, and just before the pandemic shut the world down, he sent me over one of his baritones to have a look at, which did pretty well in the reviews. And one or two little issues, one or two quirks with it, but it was still a very good instrument, and what it showed me me was that it was quite clear that he knew what he was doing with traditional guitar making and instrument making skills because there was a lot of little features in that that you don't normally see on ukuleles anyway i'm glad he's kept going and he's still building and people are buying them because they are very nice and he sent me over a tenor now whilst that original baritone was very striking because it was made of the local coca bolo wood this one is a lot more classy and traditional and uh, tr yeah traditional this is a tenor scale ukulele and it's made of all solid Nicaraguan cedar wood uh, and I think I think it's really classy looking it's a classy looking instrument uh, the cedar here is very different I think from European cedar because there's quite a lot of grain in it we've got two pieces on the top two pieces on the base two pieces on the slightly curved back but there's quite a lot of grain color in it color variations this sort of it's book matched on the top so you get this pale stripe but also darker grains in it it doesn't really remind me of, of cedar uh it's book matched kind of well a little bit annoying that that not not there is more noticeable than this one here but this is a handmade instrument and I'll, I'll give that a buy um but otherwise i think it looks terrifically classy there are quirks in it such as the top curve shape is very very slightly different from the base so i think it's been done by eye and that means that the, the, <laughs> the joint here is kind of on a strange sort of angle not not severely but i noticed it uh, and it doesn't affect the way the instrument plays and it's put together very well but it's clear it's been made in a workshop with a guy you know drawing the thing still i do like it the bridge uses the traditional local coca bolo wood that's really nice and shallow it's a tie bar style uh straightforward with a curved top bone saddle i'll come on to why that's curved over the top that's really neat and tidy i like that uh decoration we have coca bolo edge binding which is complemented by a purfling strip of a wood called acetuno which is olive wood and that's on the front and the back and on the tail stripe that works really well with the pale color of the body and around the sound hole i really like this that's a mango sound hole ring which is almost greeny gray in color uh, i really like that and that's edged with more acetuno and cocobolo i really like that <coughs> you'll have spotted there's a side sound port here you might also be looking at the edges of this wood and thinking whoa that looks a bit thick the woods are not thick that is a strengthening ring around the top there and he's got a strengthening ring around that i've had a look inside the sides aren't actually that thick that's there to protect the edge of that so that's a nice touch inside shows me again what a traditional builder he is we've got a spanish heel uh, attaching the neck to the body here that is to say that the body of the instrument is effectively built around the neck heel for stability and sound transference the bracing on the top runs this way the kerfing is notched the braces themselves are nice and thin there is no mess he has also finished the inside of the instrument with a thin coat of shellac some very high-end guitar makers do that partly because it makes the instrument look nice inside and less unfinished bare wood but there's also a school of thought that says that that helps with the reflective sound reflective qualities of the back wood meaning the vibrations create more volume more tone either way whatever the reason is 
you can see that it's been shellacked because it's got a sort of yellowy color inside there and it's very very slightly shiny i like that all right let's move on the neck cedar three pieces the joints are pretty well hidden as i say it's a spanish heel construction there looks like there's a heel cap there on the on the heel itself um that's got a quite nice pleasing flat profile up here it's also incredibly roomy for a tenor 39 mil nut width and a 33 mil g2a that's really wide it's topped with a coca bolo fingerboard which i really like the look of i think that contrasts really well with the pale color of the body and the reason that bridge is curved is because there's a radius on the fingerboard that you can see it's quite a severe radius for a ukulele that's a 10 inch radius not as strong a radius as the um uh, the baritone i looked at but um normally there are about 12 on a ukulele but still uh, you know that's a, a, a radius also slightly quirky one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen to the body 14 15 16 17 for a tenor still 17 inch tenor scale that's a different way of joining it nothing wrong with it just different um and they're pretty skinny obviously curved dressed really well because they are edge bound with more coca bola and in a design cue i've never seen before but i think works really really well the whole face of the fingerboard has a purfling edge of a paler wood i think it's the olive wood uh framing it all the way around all the way up to the nut so it's in like a box i absolutely love the look of that i think that works really well okay we've got real pearl uh dot markers facing out on uh, three five seven ten and twelve no side dots come on uh, I'd specify those. This is a Luthier build. If you can get him to build you one to order, you just ask for them. I just don't know why he doesn't put them on. At least he's put some dots on this. There wasn't any dots at all on the baritone. Uh, the nut is made of bone, uh, as is the saddle. My first design cue I wasn't really enjoying is the sort of <laughs> plainness of the headstock. It's quite a large headstock. It's faced in more cedar front and back. I don't know why um probably to hide the joint up there but it's very pale and it doesn't really look any different to any other part of the instrument and it looks a bit lonely it needs it needs to be a bit smaller and it needs a logo uh otherwise they're like that top shape and there are worse things i could complain about that really are i mean that's my first issue with the instrument that and side dots tuners grover open gears in chrome these are the same tuners i have on my canalea tenor no complaints from me whatsoever and this is tuned in Dario with dario titanium strings for high g no problem with those it comes with a handmade hard case made by a local builder of cases for him which is quite quirky a rectangular case that's a bit big for me to have in here and show you and that comes in at a price of 650 dollars shipped to anywhere in the world that's a pretty good price for a handmade instrument what comes in about 500 quid for a tenor with a sound port and an excellent gloss finish and decorations and curved fingerboard it's really not bad at all and a case and with shipping uh this one i really like um yeah the, there are still quirks with it but they're not major quirks less quirks than there were with the baritone but there's something i'm really liking about it it's not too heavy either 635 grams about as heavy as my canalera i think really nicely balanced really nicely balanced at the 12th but we're gonna have a play <clears throat> let's tune up i've been playing this one a lot which probably tells you everything doesn't it It's got good volume. Not out the park, but very good volume. The sustain is wonderful. I can feel it in my chest. I can feel it in my hands here. I can feel it in this arm. It's really, really resonant instrument. Do 
peppier, zingier than I expected for cedar, which is normally a woodier tone. It's quite bright uh, and zingy, peppy. Almost sounds more like a concert than uh, a tenor. It is tenor scale. Maybe it's the joining at that 13th, I don't know. But it is zingy and peppy. That's a good thing. I will say the radius on the fingerboard is a bit too strong for me, but I think uh, you'd get over that with the Des play. I think it shines better finger picked. sounding instrument um, yeah I'm really pleased with this one actually um, yeah it's all good it's all good it's well put together yeah it's quirky I love the sort of touches of traditional build that are going on with this it hasn't built it like a guitar because it's not heavy it's not overly built it's not dead sounding it's really nice and thin it's very lively I'd probably tone the, the radius down a little bit I'd want to see side dots I'd like a logo up there, but that really is about it. I love the classy look of, of the body the colors and the binding. Um, and you know you're getting something that's totally unique. So quirks don't really matter to me so much, really. Um, they are what they are. Um, there we are, the NFC Cedar Tenor um, built by Nestor Fuentes Castillo in Nicaragua. Gets a highly recommended on Got Ukulele. Worth checking out. Have a look at his instruments. All right, enjoy yourselves for the rest of your weekend, and I'll be back next week. See you soon. Bye-bye.